Previously on Scotty Survivor Steel City. 18 contestants set out to be the very first sole survivor of Carnegie Mellon University. Right off the bat, Gerald told his tribe that he was a free agent, leading to distrust among his tribe mates. After winning the first immunity challenge, Balder played a game of Paranoia, which sparked tensions between several players. Audrey received a hidden immunity idol clue. However, little did she know, Olivia had already found the idol on day five. Now heading to tribal council, Gerald tried to rally together a group of six to vote out either Leo or L, but instead a majority alliance formed and decided to split the vote on Gerald and Audrey in case of an idol play. This sent home Gerald as the first person voted out of Scotty Survivor Steel City. What will happen tonight? Stay tuned. So after Tribal, I felt so bad for Gerald, like, oh man, that just broke my heart. Like, he really didn't see it coming. Well, we I'm kind of surprised Audrey and Holly Wu stuck with Gerald, and they voted Gerald. I know. I thought Audrey like play an idol for I really thought Audrey was playing us. Like I was gonna be off and I'd be like, great play guys. But now I'm just sad. I do think this uh yesterday last night did really solidify the alliance of the free agents that I had with Dorothy, Leo, Anthony, and Olivia. Everyone did what they were say that they were going to do, which is great. Um hopefully we can trust this six going into the next vote, but six out of eight is a really big alliance, so I feel like things are gonna shift around and change definitely. Personally, I would have liked to have voted out like Dorothy or Jacob just because I'm not as close to them. I still really like them and I'm, I'm glad that they're kind of in our alliance, our free agents alliance. Looking forward, I hope to stick with the six, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were subgroups that developed. Um, and if it comes down to it, I am ready to um, leave my alliance or just vote against them. I'm really nervous, to be honest. I really hope nothing like detrimental happens or that my alliance, or like my alliances. I mean, I guess I'm really only technically in an alliance with L. Yeah, Gerald went home. Honestly, like, I don't feel bad. Like, everyone's like, yeah, I feel so bad because he's like, um, like a nice person. Like, yeah, I, like I like him as a person, but like in terms of the game, which is like what we're in, like, cool. Bye. Glad it's not me. I keep thinking that these people are like bad when they're really not. And then I feel bad when they go home. Not that I thought Gerald was bad, but I thought he was like masterminding the whole alliance, the freshman alliance, which after talking to Holly and Audrey comes to find out is not a thing. So like, I feel badly about that. Sorry, Gerald. I also watched his like intro video and he says he doesn't drink or have a girlfriend. That was kind of interesting. But yeah, I mean, he probably can't find a girlfriend on Survivor now though. A couple of days ago, Audrey told all of us that she will reveal the idol clue immediately, like right after Tribal Council. Well, I mean, this is good news. Now if Audrey sticks to her plan, she's gonna release the clue. You think she releasing the clue after that? No. <laughs> No, if she does release a clue, that is just confirming that she has it. I'm about to go hang out with Audrey. It's not really a date. Don't want it to be a date. It's not. Please, producers, <laughs> don't make it out to be one. It's just for information. Are you going to try looking for the idol on your own, like, before it, just in case, or is it like... I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to send you guys the clue. Wait, wait, wait. You know, I don't think you need to say sorry. I don't think you need to say sorry. I think you should just say, hey, here's the clue or something. Or, I mean, your choice, your choice. No, because I want to seem, like, honest and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Audrey brought up the idea of, like, oh, like, do you want to do a fake idol? And, like, honestly, I was kind of surprised she, like, showed me the clue, like, so, like, care not carelessly, but, like, she just, like, gave it to me. He, like, he's, like, one of the few people, like, on the team that I could actually talk to, so he could be, like, a good strategic ally, and he's ally, and he's also, like, a nice person and stuff. So I, I ended up telling him. So then I was just like, I mean, do you think Audrey will stay at the clue? 
And then he says, I doubt it because we haven't talked strategy at all. I really don't think she'll tell anyone on the track. This makes me, okay, he's lying. And there's two reasons I know. First of all is that if you've been playing Survivor together for as long as you have, and just in person together, not like being on the same team, but being fused, doing challenges, you're gonna talk strategy. And so she was like, do you want to do fake? I was like, yeah, totally. Like first week, might as well just like go all the way, you know? I mean, if you hadn't talked strategy at all with her, how would you know that she's not gonna share the clue with anybody? Come on, buddy. So she definitely shared it with him. An hour later, after tribal, not even an hour later, she shared the clue. Okay. All right, send the fake one. Yeah, so instead of it saying, fuck, what's original? I think he used to say selected by the public, but outcast he resented, find what you're looking for um, on the digital page where his name was mentioned and so we changed it to selected by the public but outcast he resented find what you're looking for in the place where his rival was mentioned who's he wait what the fuck selected by the public but outcast he resented i mean it looks super legit so find what you're looking for in the place where his rival was mentioned. Selected by the public. It's like an Alexander Hamilton thing. Oh. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. In the room where it happened. Oh! If someone, for example, like Jacob or L or someone gets a legitimate clue and they compare it to the fake one you sent, then and they realize it's not the same, they can't tell anyone. Because if they tell anyone, people are going to know they have a legitimate clue because they have to justify why they think your clue's fake. And then yeah. people are going to know. So they're not want, they're not going to want to say anything. And they're just going to keep it to themselves. So I think we're fine. What's up, guys? And welcome to Eric's Fancy Friday, Change Salt to Butter, Game Recap. Sponsored by... Okay. Today, me and Audrey's gonna meet. She's gonna give me the rundown of uh, the entire tribal council. Maybe Hallie will give me some stuff too. I wanna know. Oh yeah, it was interesting. It's like the bigger alliance had to split the votes uh, between me, Andrew, and Gerald. And then all the other alliance had to split the votes between me and Gerald. So okay. Gerald was eliminated. Who, like, who else on the on your tribe are you close to? Um. So I did like really like I did the dolphin thing with Michael. Yeah. He trusts me a lot because I bought him food. <laughs> and I was like, when I bought him, I was like, yeah, you know, like, you owe me. <laughs> Michael loves me. Michael's a great guy. Honestly, like, he's just a blind follower. Eric, I got your back. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to feel so bad when I have to stab him in the back at some point. Especially us. Like, we got to stick together because we are the, the lower men on the totem pole. Not that the... Things gonna break down like that, but you never know. Like we have the least amount of connections to the other people. So I think I had a really good conversation with Eric. I really think me and Eric we get along. We're we're of the same mind. Um, I think us working together would be really a good idea. Hallie also thinks that we're in alliance, um, and Audrey and Hallie are. So they both trust me 100%. I said I'm not telling anyone anything, and I've been telling the Apple Mile group almost everything other than the fact that I know Hallie and the fact that three of us are playing on a line as well. Spent this weekend ignoring my homework and watching an entire season of Survivor, which I had never previously seen in its entirety. And I've learned a few things. It's difficult to read Zoe because her whole thing is that she is only genuine and all she is is genuine. I think like, I really like Amara, um, she's someone who I definitely want to go forward working with, we can be, I feel like, pretty real with each other, and we both did kind of mention that, um, like, if we had to vote someone out right now, it probably would be Zoe. A genuine person can only be genuine for so long, and once they make one mistake, once they fall once, they are no longer a genuine person. Even if I do have a target on my back, after talking to... Sarah and mentioning Sarah's name like I definitely thought after that interaction oh I'm fucked like I'm I'm definitely definitely going this round 
So it was kind of comforting to know someone was kind of feeling the exact same way I was in terms of not having spoken to her. I also have some added, like, meh, because of the paranoia game that we all played and her saying my name. Um, but it, honestly, like, my answer was her even before that. It doesn't really matter if someone thinks you're gunning for them or not, as long as you have the numbers. That's what they always say on Survivor. Now that I'm a Survivor fanatic, you just have to have the numbers. And I think, as of right now, I have the numbers. I trust Zoe 100%. She Definitely not capping at all. May is about 90% trust. I, I, I think she can hide stuff if she wanted to. Corey, like 50-50, bro. Like, you gotta, you gotta stop. Like, dude, he's questionable. I may, met with Corey and we, we didn't really talk a lot of strategy even though I tried to kind of like make it veer in that direction, but I think he's like really nice. Um, we have a lot in common in terms of like, both liking theater and stuff like that, so. It's definitely a relationship that I'm willing to like go forward with and like look into more. So we just got notified of our next challenge and Shane says, The next challenge is at the end of your break. There will be an important decision to make. Come through, Dr. Zeus. All right. You'll need strength in numbers. So don't come late. There's lots of paranoia this challenge will create. Um, I'm going to rate this challenge rhyme at a out of four. It's not the best one. I'm sure they'll come up with better ones. So we're gonna be playing Paranoia. Um, I have no idea what that means, but I'm guessing he's gonna try to break apart whatever existing alliances we have or just make us question our teammates. Okay, I'm done. I'm down. <laughs> My theory is that we're gonna have to like hold some kind of pose or like some kind of position it's gonna be uncomfortable hopefully this week does go a bit better and i just don't have to worry about tribal here's hoping it's literally like 5 30 in the morning i'm watching <laughs> survival michigan y'all i didn't know this game was so savage i'm not <laughs> I need to step up my game if it's gonna get like this. If we lose, there will be fireworks. Alder getting your first look at the new Ogun tribe, Jarrell voted out at the last tribal council. Welcome to today's immunity challenge, the name being a number poker knockout. Tribal immunity is back up for grabs and we're going to get started momentarily. There are two parts to this challenge, there is the plank portion and the number poker. For the plank portion, four tribe mates will compete in a plank competition. The person who lasts longest will choose one member of the opposite tribe to eliminate in the number poker portion of the game. For the number poker, the other four members that did not plank will participate and you will go in a randomized order alternating between tribes, building a series of digits by saying a number zero through nine on your turn. Anybody can challenge the person before them by saying challenge and if they challenge, you'll have to recite 
the numbers that have been listed so far. If you get the numbers correct, then the person who challenged you is out. And if you get the numbers incorrect, then you are out. The last person standing will win tribal immunity for their tribe and will be safe from tribal council this week. One important thing to note is that we're going to be keeping an even matchup of the number of people participating per tribe. So if there's an uneven number in the number poker section, we will sit one person out from the other tribe for that round only to make sure that it's even. Balder, you have one person to sit out in this challenge. Who's it going to be? I will be sitting out. Balder has selected Michael to sit out of this challenge. But before we get started, we have a proposition for you. We have an unparalleled opportunity to give yourself an advantage in the game. You can choose to take an idle clue that is the third one in the sequence and is the most specific. However, this will force you to drop out of this challenge by throwing it in the middle. If you are in the plank portion, you will have to drop within the first 30 seconds. And if you are in the number poker section, if you get the idle clue, you will then have to uh, mess up the string of numbers the first time you are challenged. If none of us decide to take the idle clue we get to kick two people off of the other drive for the challenge yeah yep. Six. the way that this will work is everybody will close their eyes if you want to go for the temptation you will literally just have to raise your hand if more than one person goes for the temptation we will do a wheel and you will be notified via pm let's get started with the temptation All right, everybody can open their eyes. Now we are going to put you into breakout rooms by tribe and you're gonna have a few seconds to, strategy, to strategize and, um, and basically decide who's doing what. We need to first find out from y'all who's doing what officially. We will then mm -hmm. send that to the other tribe as well in the case that they also are able to eliminate. Um, and in that case, then we will announce on call who is doing the challenge for both tribes. Um, and then after I get that list for the other tribe as well, I'll let you know who's doing what, and you can choose two people to eliminate. Okay. 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 There'll be one from Plank and one from Number. Okay. okay. Complete hot take. I think someone on their side took it. No way. Oh, for sure. I think so too. Sure. I think okay. so too. Everybody is deciding what they want to do. Okay. And then you are picking two people from the other tribe to eliminate. Oh, nobody oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, okay, okay. I'm so Who proud of everyone. Eliminate? Does this Who mean is... we didn't do, we didn't, none of us picked the idol clue? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> we look... All right, so we have Dorothy, Holly, and Anthony on the planks. You can then... have four, four on the planks. All right, oh. do the plank then. Okay. And yeah. how many numbers, Shane? What, four, four and four. Okay, right. so I think that's me, Audrey, L, and Leo for numbers, correct? Yeah. All right. So, you will have to eliminate one person from their numbers and one person from their numbers. It's going to be Eric from the plank. So, the, number, the numbers we have is Zoe, Corey, May, and Cushy. Corey. I'd say Corey or May. I think if Jacob does the number, he seems pretty smart. Yeah. Eric was coming for joy when he heard Wait, Plank. Can you just say you again who's doing Kevin's Plank? Better? Eric. Can you... Raise your hand. If I'm planking. I'm fine with either at this point. Okay. Wait, Kev, I feel like you'd be better with numbers. Or are you like a really good planker? <laughs> um, I play Kevin. water polo. I mean, if someone else wants to. Oh, wait, water Kevin, how long? Water polo requires yeah. a lot. Imagine how long yeah, can you okay. play for? Eric. Yeah, Eric. Eric. If there's someone who is better, who, like, they think they can match that time for playing. Three game. minutes? Three. No. no, 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 Kevin, take it. Kevin, take it. Kevin, take it. Okay, so <laughs> it's Kevin, Sarah, Eric, Kevin, and Todd. Oh, shit. And then yeah. it's Zoe, Corey, I haven't played water polo in six months, Kushi. <laughs> and the uh, numbers, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. correct. But that's a strong team. Would you rather be on that tribe, Anthony? <laughs> no, we're gonna win! 
So, after that incredibly suspenseful temptation, Jacob and Anthony have both been eliminated from this challenge, as well as Eric and Corey. So, okay. for Ogan, we have, doing the planks, we have Olivia, Hallie, and Dorothy. And for Balder, we have Sarah, Amara, and Kevin. For the numbers, for Ogan, we have Leo, Elle, and Audrey. And for Balder, we have Zoe, May, and Cushy. So, we're going to get set up and get started. This challenge is on in five, four, three, two, one. Begin. I gotta say, I look good in the external camera, guys. I know it doesn't look like it from here, but it looks good. <laughs> For Ogan, in this plank, we have Olivia, Hallie, and Dorothy. And for Balder, we have Sarah, Amara, and Kevin. The last person standing will get to eliminate somebody from the number poker part of this challenge. 30 seconds. We have been going for about 30 seconds, and nobody has dropped. job, everybody. Damn, Kevin's doing this in jeans. <laughs> everybody adjusting a little bit. Starting to see the pain coming through at a minute and 30 seconds. Oh, Olivia's giving the middle finger. <laughs> hey, no lifting your feet up. Final warning. For Olivia, do not lift your feet up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we are now at two minutes and everybody is still in. Oh my god. Damn, I probably would have been out by now. <laughs> I don't think I've seen Holly or Kevin move. I'm out. Oh, and Olivia has dropped. Good job, Olivia. You asked the two and a half minutes. <laughs> Yay! Oh my god. Oh, yeah. Kevin, you're arcing your butt up a lot now. It's like <laughs> straight. Thanks, Kevin. No problem. <laughs> oh, god. Shit! <laughs> Sorry, guys. Has passed. Five are remaining. Sorry, y'all. We still have four remaining. Amara, Kevin, Hallie, and Dorothy. Kevin and Amara, stick it out. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Sorry, y'all. So sorry. <laughs> you got it. Amara, did you just drop? Yeah. Amara no, is out at three sorry, minutes. Sorry, you holding it. Kevin? Oh, Amara. Amara. Kevin, you got this. Oh, Holy oh, Kevin. You did so good. <laughs> Kevin's butt is so high. Does this count? <laughs> Kevin, lower the butt one more time. Four minutes in, we still have Hallie and Dorothy and Kevin still Kevin, in. Kevin, you got this. You're doing great. You're doing great. Think uh, about that water pose. Uh, <laughs> you got this, Dorothy. Free. Let's go, Dorothy. And Hallie. You're doing so great, Kevin. This is Dorothy, 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 Dorothy. Come on, Kevin. Feel the burn, uh, Kevin. Feel Hallie, the burn. Guys, you got this. Oh, Kevin, make God. sure you're the. Dorothy, guys. Now you're out. arcing the other way. Make sure it's straight. You got this, Ogan. You're doing great, Dorothy and Holly. You're doing so great, Kevin. You're killing it right now. Don't let you go. go. You got this. Holly has not moved. Dorothy and Holly, you guys yeah. are doing amazing. Keep it up. Oh, Kevin. Holly frozen. Flatten yourself. Oh, I can't do it. Kevin, you're gonna need to lower. You're doing a push up. Might want to rethink the strategy of voting out the freshman after that Gerald vote, huh? <laughs> oh, Kevin dropped. Kevin is out of the 
that Let's the remaining three players, oh, Ali, you get to pick between Ooh. any of the three unbalder that are supposed to take part in the numbers to eliminate. So that is Zoe, May, and Cushy. Please make your decision now. Uh, uh, wait. I'll take out, uh, May. All right. So for Balder, we have Zoe and Cushy. Uh, can you guys pick one person to sit out from Ogan for the first round? That would be either Leo, L, or Audrey. As a reminder, they're only out for this round. They are not out for the entire challenge, whereas May has been eliminated for the entire challenge. I We're gonna take Audrey out for the first yeah, round. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I'm putting in a randomizer of Cushy, Zoe, Leo, and L for this first round. Okay, the order is as followed. Zoe, L, Cushy, and Leo. Three. L. Four. Five. Six. One. Three. Seven. Nine. Three. When can we challenge? Anytime you want. And we can choose any person? You can only choose the person before you. I choose the person before me. All right, Cushy is challenging L. L, please repeat the numbers back. Three, four, five, six, one, three, nine, seven, two. Incorrect. The string of numbers was three, four, five, six, one, three, seven, nine, three, two. Ella has been eliminated from this first round of the challenge. So we are at two each. So everybody is taking part in this round. So for Ogan, we have Leo and Audrey. And for Balder, we have Cushy and Zoe. The new order is Cushy, Audrey, Zoe, and Leo. One. Two. Five. Eight. Seven. Nine. Five. Challenge. One, two, five, eight, seven, nine. Nope, incorrect. Oh. One, two, five, eight, seven, nine. Five. Zoe has been eliminated from this challenge, and we are down to the last Balder member in this ch challenge. So, um, Cushy, you are picking either Leo or Audrey to sit out of this. Um, I'll pick Audrey to sit out. All right, so it is Cushy and Leo. The order is Leo, then Cushy. Eight. Seven. Three. Three. Six. Five. Four. Three. Challenge. Eight, seven, three, three, six, five, four, three. Correct, Leo has been eliminated from this challenge, and we are down to Audrey and Cushy. All right, three. One. Four. Three. Two. One. Nine. Seven. Eight. Challenge. Three, one, four, three, two, one, nine, seven, eight. And with that, Ogan wins immunity. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Audrey. Audrey, it's thank you. you. You did your best. Thank you. Uh, you're awesome. You did, you did awesome. really well, Cushy. Don't worry. 
I'd just like to point out that the freshman completely carried this challenge between Hallie on Ogan and Audrey and Cushy for the numbers. Upperclassmen, you might want to start taking some notes. <laughs> we haven't worked out in years, okay, so... <laughs> We fucking won! Okay. I'm so fucking relieved. So Holly and I went into the challenge and we were just like, oh, we just want to like do as well as possible so we can like prove our worth to the team and stuff. So I went pretty well because Holly won the plank round and I run the number round. I guess adrenaline just like does miracles because like I didn't feel my abs. Like I just like didn't have any feeling anywhere. Like my legs were fucking shaking so much. And I was just like, <laughs> the whole time. Me holding a plank for who knows how long, that's not happening. Mm -mm, not with this body. Kevin should have been kicked out like a minute and a half before he was, like if his camera angle wasn't so bad. Kevin, lower the butt one more time. He looked like a fucking roller coaster, right? Like planks are supposed to be like still, keep your back straight. Homie was moving his ass like up and down, like he was doing like a really bad push up. My house doesn't pop out, cause I don't have one. Like, he looked like a fucking roller coaster. He's going up and fucking down, flipping around and shit. Like, that's not a plank. I was built up, ready to go, and I volunteered to do, do the stupid planking, and I guess I, I look like the most fit person on my tribe, which is probably true, not to be cocky or anything. Like, Kevin did a great job planking, but his form was absolutely atrocious. Kevin, we need you to oh, stop yeah. reorienting yeah. yourself. For Eric, for the word plank for the first time, he's like, yes! Yes! Look at the plank! I get to show off how strong I am. It felt like you guys gave me um, an ice cream cone, like I was a little baby. I was about to take a lick out of it, and then you just took the ice cream away. Because that that's honestly how like not playing in the challenge felt to me. I get to show off all the gym. People are gonna know I play JV soccer in high school, and I might play IM at CMU. Oh, I get to flex my athletic abilities and swag. Yeah, I could have planked like five or six minutes, and I I know I could have in this situation. And like, I was just so annoyed. So annoyed. Oh my god. And then the second you guys said we could kick someone out of the planking, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking enjoy this kid's reaction to him getting kicked out of something he was really excited to do, right? Damn, that challenge, it was, it was tough. I did as best as I could. Five minutes and something? I need to know whoever that guy was that beat me. I want to know what he does for exercise every day. Because damn, those were some long ass planks. I ended up losing the challenge. Yeah, that kind of sucked. So then afterwards, I met with the Apple Mile people right away. I'm like, yeah, we got to like talk about this. I was so, so worried that Zoe's just gonna be like, okay, yeah, Sarah, like definitely Sarah. And then Sarah to me was gonna be like, Zoe, definitely Zoe, right? Because they had like that whole beef. Okay, understand, I'm gonna explain myself because the question was, if you had to vote someone off right now, who would it be? <laughs> oh no. Sorry. And then I was just gonna be like, yeah, like, okay, yeah, like Sarah, I should definitely like vote her out to Zoe and then to Sarah, like, yeah, like we should definitely, definitely vote out Zoe, Sarah, so. Technically, then the two options are Amada and Sarah. First things, of course, like that Zoe said was, yeah, like I think we should vote on Sarah, right? Because the thinking was we can't vote on Kevin because he was doing really well at the plank and we can't vote on Cushy because she was doing the numbers and then we obviously can't vote on him before. So then it was between Amara and then Sarah. Sarah's on um, like game wise smarter. I don't know, Amara's No, but Amara's like, also so much more possible. Like, yeah, she's. So I she'll like if there's a tribe swap, she could pair a lot better than Sarah. Yeah, I think Sarah's like okay, like less likable than Amara is, if that's what yeah. I'm about to say. I really hope she's like she doesn't seem like the type of person to be like backstabbing or anything. I just feel very paranoid because we're in survivor mode. Um, but she's definitely someone I want to work yeah, with. She's always right though, like if we vote out Sarah, like kinda looks us. I was just trying to push like really hard that if we vote out Sarah, something's gonna get back to like, oh, Zoe and Sarah had beef, right? So of course Zoe voted for Sarah. But then who else did Zoe get to vote for Sarah, right? And then it would just kind of circle back on us. And like the main thing with our alliance, I think is secrecy. So I guess it just comes down to like strategy. And honestly, if we can get then 
Kevin, Kushi, and Michael all on our side to split a vote and try and just avoid an idol. Because if we can get all seven, then we're solid. Then, uh, yeah, I feel like they were all on board with Amara. I was like, yes, like, perfect, we can get Michael in. Michael will definitely vote with me. I know that for a fact. Yeah. So, like, Dang. <laughs> You got him wrapped around your finger. He was literally just like a puppy on a leash, right? Whoever holds the leash can just take Michael anywhere. And right now that's Amara, so I want to get Amara out so then that leash transfers over to Eric and then therefore all of us and we would have majority. Amara said that she talked to Michael. Yeah. So She's like- Not surprised. And she said like, my, and she said her and Michael are like doing a thing and they want to know what I'm thinking about being in alliance with. Oh no. I thought Michael was like- what, is, what are they thinking about doing? Well, I don't know, but like Michael clearly brought brought me up to Amara. Yeah. So now I gotta, I gotta join that, right? <laughs> so I texted Michael for a daddy thick alliance we made starting like the first day of challenges or something to see if we should expand. And like, we definitely were holding it off until after the challenge. But I texted him right away and we kind of started discussing like who we should have in our team, in our alliance thingy. And Eric's name definitely came up. It was something we both really wanted. Uh, someone who we both really wanted to have in the alliance, a strong competitor. Our little Apple Mile group is getting a little more complicated because uh, it's the four of us that we wanted to kind of, at least I thought we were going to kind of control things, but it really turns out that Michael, Amara, and Sarah created another, their own group and kind of dragged Eric in. I have two alliances right now, right? Apple Mile Gang, which is Zoe, um, me, Corey, and May, and the other alliance, Daddy Thick, which is me, Amara, Sarah, and Michael. Well, I feel good, guys. You guys all feel, I feel really good about this. Okay, yeah. I thought each other's like we're, we're, all we're all making it to week three. We're all making it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Daddy Thick is making it to week three. I had breakfast with Sarah today, who was an unexpected alliance for sure. I, um, she's a very sweet girl. We get along really well. So, and like, she calms me down for sure. Um, I'm stressed most of the time. So it was, I was glad to be able to like, you know, get, talk to her and like, see where she was at. And we kind of made an alliance. So we started off the Zoom call and it was like, it was me, Amara, um, Sarah and then Michael joined and he was making fish and he was only like half there, but <laughs> anyway, so like at, at the start, Sarah was like the first to bring up someone and she was like, I, f I know, like, she said like Kevin, because when she talked to him one on one, like everyone else, she thought he was sketch. <laughs> he is sketch. <laughs> but also I'm like, is he sketch or is he just like not, you know, like. I think he knows more than like, I think he's sketch. <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's just my first judgment. Like normally, like everyone else in the entire tribe, like my first judgment on them was like, yeah, they're super nice. And then Kevin, like he was nice, but I'm like, sketch. Kevin gets out. I want to kind of work with Tushy and see if I can get her trust me and vote with me, and then hopefully get a five, get get five numbers on our side for the next vote. It went on like that for about five minutes. We we're all like pretty clear with Kevin, and then Sarah was like, well, um, remember paranoia and like. Like, I feel like we could get Zoe. Don't judge me. I was also thinking Zoe to get rid of. <laughs> Look at Eric Shane. I guess I showed it in my face a little bit. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't, and not that explicitly, but like it, was, it showed a little bit. They're telling us everything that's happening on their end and not telling them what's happening on our end. At least that's the. That's the story he's telling us, which at this point, I believe, I don't really have a reason to think that he would go against us. And Corey has been very quiet. I don't trust that, like, I can't tell him I don't trust him, but I don't trust him. I trust Zoe. She knows I have her back. She owes me one. Um, May trusts me. I trust May. And then, I think that Amara and Michael fully trust me. I don't trust Sarah. I, I trust that our alliance is not lying. I trust Michael with my whole heart. Michael could like literally give me my heart and I would trust him to not drop it. And I really trust Sarah. We talked and like, I think she really is trusting me to uphold this. And I also trust Eric because I think he's like just a very trustworthy guy. Michael seems to be a blind follower of Sarah. He's 
I don't think he's better than I think he is. I don't know who else I can trust in this game, but I feel, I feel good about this. Yep. It's like full trust, full, full good. He said he didn't talk to anybody else on our team, really. And I'm sure that's not true. Um, because obviously it's Survivor. Everyone lets on, everyone lets on that they know less than they do. It's Survivor, it's in the nature of the game. <laughs> like I'm playing all parties here and it, it, like, oh my God, like there's so, so much information that I know that other people don't. Information is power in this game. And Eric has a lot of information. I don't know. He seemed a little scared, actually. I mean, he was pretty good at acting. He could become a drama major here at CMU if he was lying. I could also have all the power, and no one would know it. But, Jesus Christ, there's a deer on the road in Forbes Avenue. Damn. Maybe all I want is to not be that deer on the road that just almost got ran over screen away from danger at the last minute. I want to be in the know. I want to be reveling in the danger and knowing what's coming at me so that I know what's best to react. I want to make alliances that help me. Not my friends, not the people I'm in alliances with. I want to make alliances that help me. I don't even think the challenge is necessarily like a fair metric except for like Cushy because she like she worked it out. Oh, killed yeah. it, yeah. Or, and Kevin also. And like, Kevin also killed it. Yeah. Starting from the beginning, it definitely seemed like I would be okay. A lot of people reached out to me um, to ask how I was feeling, to ask what my thoughts were, and um, just to let me know that, like, they probably wouldn't vote for me. I, my thought is, I think, and this is going to sound mean, so apologies in advance, but I think we could get rid of Kevin any week. I think it will get increasingly more difficult to get rid of Zoe should we like should she stay longer and like build upon her relationships. That is what I'm saying. I'm just, I was just kind of like, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I agree. And then we were trying to get talking about a fifth person and that's when I was like, uh, that's when Sarah brought up May. I feel like, cause we're both like juniors in engineering. I feel like some kind of something with her. The whole idea was that the fifth person in the alliance would be myself. And uh, I would kind of be like the deciding, not like deciding factor, but they were between voting on Zoe because Sarah brought them up and then also Kevin. And so like, right, like I have to tread super lightly with Sarah about Zoe because like I'm in alliance with both of them. And of course, like they both have to not like each other. I mean, I still want her not technically in the alliance. So if she hears some kind of game plan to get rid of me or her vice versa, like we can kind of stop it. So I think that's still, a safe bet. I think my alliances right now like aren't. I can't, I don't think they're fake right now. I like I just don't. I just don't know like if that were ever to collide and them to realize that I was working with Sarah the whole time or like Sarah to realize that I was working with Corey, Eric, and Zoe. I don't know what. I have no idea what I would do. That would just completely, completely ruin my game. Especially because I just don't know which one I would be completely loyal to. They have their own little daddy stick group, is what they're calling it. And then it sounds like they're gonna take in May. The the alliance is gonna remain secret of the four, of of me, Michael, um, Amar. So you guys don't know anything about that. No. Yeah. Me. I hope our alliance is not fake. No, I'm worried. And I'm just chilling. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's not gonna get voted off anytime soon. Everyone loves Eric. I'm just like this excited little kid who is gonna go along with whatever people say. And even the Apple Mile gang think like, yeah, I, I can be trusted no matter what because I'm just, I'm, I'm loyal and supportive and I, I'm not good at, at, at lying. But yeah, little do they know. I might come back to Kevin. I feel really strongly about not eliminating Kushi. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I, especially based off this challenge too. You know, Kushi and I haven't really talked one on one, but like, <laughs> there's just a connection. Um, I adore her, so I would never vote her out, and I don't think she would vote me out either. Not yet, at least. I, I think she might vote me out, like, once she sees me as a stronger competitor, like, right against her. But I also don't know if Kushi and Kevin get along well. 
Because I was yeah, trying I don't to mention, like I talked to Kevin today and I was trying to mention like, have you hung out with Kush, Kushi? Like, have you all talked? He like, hasn't. I, I talked to both of them also and like, they said they didn't talk to, they haven't really talked to each other. I like Kushi a lot though. Same. Yeah. I talked to Kushi, I'm oh, sorry. I talked to Kevin for an hour about literally nothing. <laughs> He's very, he was not giving anything away, but we yeah, chit like, had it like, for like an hour. really good through to him. Yeah. I feel like he might just like build on his own. So we're turning salt into butter slowly. I don't know, this is my catchphrase. Salt into butter. Mm. Doesn't mean too much yet because I don't feel like I'm being handed grain of salt. I feel like I'm being handed butter already and I'm just making more butter. But if I don't play my cards right, then I'll have grains of salt and I'm gonna have to slip through the cracks with butter. Stay tuned for another time. So I just get a text from Kevin saying that people are saying my name to vote me off and that he wants to form a coalition because he's heard his name going around too, that he doesn't know who's putting my name out there. Kevin, you are terrible at this game, terrible. You're so bad at this. Like, I don't know if you've seen Survivor at all or not. I haven't, and I know you're bad because you started making up lies about random other people. First off, when I tell you my freaking heart dropped, dropped, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna get eliminated. This is the one thing I was scared about. It's like Amara was telling me that he told her that people were trying to vote her out and then you know i had to act like all surprised like what like who was trying to vote you out definitely definitely not me and you know and of course i text our alliance it's happening and sarah got the same text from him I, like, kevin was saying he messaged me and he said that people had been throwing around my name but i think he was just saying that because he also sent the same exact message to amara and I also think that he said that he wanted to form a coalition against Zoe because that was like convenient for me because she said my name in the paranoia game. The fact that he's lying to me, the fact that he's fully going on and lying, like unless he's not and I get eliminated, but like the fact that he would do that and just like play me like that is taking me to another level of no mercy. I don't really like to say specific names because it's kind of like, you know, I'm like, because first of all, I could, it makes me feel like I'm kind of like manipulative, you know, I'm like, hey, oh, you know, know. so-and-so said what well, so-and-so, and that's like, doesn't feel as good. So, Corey, um, Zoe, and May have, the, have the, like this like triple alliance currently. You were surprisingly right. <laughs> that was the bad part. Like you, were, you said like, oh, I think Zoe, May, and Corey are in alliance. And then you were like, oh, I think Eric, um, Michael, or I mean, Eric Amara and Sarah are in alliance. So yeah, that was, that's interesting. I don't know why you did that. Bad play, man, bad play. You almost, you if you just kept, stayed quiet and were like nonchalant, you would have been, I mean, we still would have tried to get you, but like there's a chance we would have had to get Zoe. I talked with Michael on this, and we are thinking that if they are making a triple alliance, then it would be best to knock one of them out early, just because that's yeah risky for everyone else. And yeah. the three is like May, Zoe, and Corey, right? And um, that's why I suggested Zoe to you, because I know like you kind of. Yeah, it does make me a little nervous. Um, so I think I would be on board with that. I've had no time in between texting happening during my classes, as well as this dinner that I'm about to go to with this person who I supposedly have beef with because I said her name during a game of paranoia. Um, I have nothing against Sarah, and honestly, I think it would be really great if we worked together because I think no one would be expecting it and it would be, it would be exciting. Um, Kevin is a little sneaky little man. Um, he, I don't know what he thinks he's going to accomplish. He right now, I can't go into that lane. He right <laughs> right now, he tried to throw me, May, and Corey under the bus by saying that we were trying to vote either Amara or Sarah out. I just met with Zoe. I really like her and I don't know what to do about it. Because last night she literally said, I don't know, Zoe's kind of dangerous if we keep her in the game. Um, 
if we keep Zoe said, if we keep Zo if we keep her in the game, you know, uh, Zoe's the type of person that's just gonna make those connections. And then Sarah comes in the next day. It's like, oh my god, I had such a good talk with Zoe. It made me so happy. So I, <laughs> she kind of just fulfilled her own prophecy. Am I worried? No. I think we have a strong four, and I think I can foster a pretty good relationship with Zoe. The only person I haven't really talked to is May. Now I bite me in the butt. I'm not really sure. I gotta text Kevin back and spout out some bullshit to him that he might enjoy. I think after all the crazy shit that Kevin's doing, he's definitely like up to bat for the chopping block. So I met with Sarah yesterday. Um, and everything worked as planned, unless I'm being blindsided. Um, I think we're pretty secure that Kevin has to go. Kevin is fucking with everyone's minds, um, and I don't trust him. I really, really don't trust him. I don't want to vote her out. I think that May should like become closer with her. I'll work with Daddy Thick on the four person alliance that I have with Amara, Michael, and Eric, and I'll just kind of swing back and forth until we get down to six, or not six, seven. Cause right now I think Kevin and Cushy are definitely up next if they're, if Cushy's like refusing to vote Kevin and Kevin's definitely next up. That just puts a target on her head. If she doesn't switch her vote to the majority, then she's next. It doesn't matter that they're good at challenges. It seems like what matters in this game, at least with the people I've talked to, is loyalty. So I just ran into Amara on the street, just luckily, and she said she talked to Kushi, and Kushi doesn't want to vote out Kevin, and that is an issue because that means we need a fifth voting for Kevin, and I'll have to talk to Michael about this. Michael needs to be our fifth. We can't get Zoe out. <laughs> I need Zoe in this competition, Mike. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who's going to fight. I don't know. I just want to be in the middle. I just want to be in the middle of it. Eric just said he wants to call me. That, that's perfect. Frick yeah. I need to talk to Eric. There were like three names that I've heard thrown around so far, which is Zoe, Sarah, and Kevin. She's 100% convinced that, um, uh, that we're all going to vote Zoe. I'm probably going to vote for Zoe. I don't know. Yeah. That's what it's, it seems like the common consensus. Really catching fire. Like Katniss. Catching fire. That's why I joined this competition. Like, I, I was like, I read Hunger Games over the summer, and I was like, man, I want to be in the Hunger Games, right? Like, that would be so fun, other than the fact that you have to kill people. But this is like the, the closest thing to the Hunger Games, where you don't actually have to kill people, you just, it's like a mind game. Mind game. And according to everyone, I'm just a little kid, I'm, I'm a stupid little kid. No one others. I'm just like hyperactive. Woohoo! I agree. Because I feel like every single person has reached out to me except for Zoe. Like, she really? reached out to me a little bit before the challenge, but after the challenge, she didn't say a word, which I thought was really crazy because, like, I think, like, Zoe and Sarah have been kind of going at it. Yeah. Um, and so I'm surprised that she didn't reach out to me because Sarah reached out to, like, actually call today and, like, have a verbal discussion, not even just a chat. And I was like, okay. It's unfortunate because I think Kevin was telling me that, like, Zoe thinks everyone's voting for you and then, like, Everyone is actually voting for her, so it kind of sucks. Like, I feel so no, bad. I know it's not fun, but also, like, I haven't talked to her that much. Mm -hmm, so, like, same. it doesn't feel as bad to me, even though, like, yeah. but, like, it's how it's gotta be, unfortunately. Like, someone's gotta be the first to go. I don't want Kevin to get voted off the show because I think that he is, like, probably the number one person that would defend me in the event that somebody else tried to vote me off. So I definitely don't want him to get voted off the show. Like he is easily like the closest person I have in this game and he's the only other person on our team that's remote. So it's kind of important that we stick together. Cause she has no idea what's coming either. Um, it feels like it shouldn't be this bad of a blind side early on, but it is. I'm about to talk to Kevin. He's the only person on this tribe that I haven't talked to in like the last few days. So let's have a good talk. So Kevin, how are you doing today? Interesting, interesting. I've got May, I've got Eric, I've got Corey, and honestly now I've got Sarah. Those are the people I feel most loyal to. 
And so at the end of the day, I'm gonna take out whoever needs to be taken out so that the people I'm loyal to and who are loyal to me stay in this game. Kevin, how do you feel that you're gonna get voted off this week? Damn, I just like, I told Kevin to his face that he's getting voted off. Come on, Kevin. I think we have the numbers to win. The alliance of three, which is May, Corey, and Zoe, we can beat them. Uh, because it's only three votes, and we have six people. Unless two or maybe three of us go to the other side, I think we're gonna carry this. So, Balder, welcome to the Ritual of Tribal Council. This is your first time coming to Tribal Council, and I know it's probably extremely nerve-wracking, kind of scary, not knowing who you can trust after talking with these people for almost two weeks at this point. So, I want to start off by asking Michael a question. So, Michael, we have now had quite a bit of time to get to know everybody on this tribe. Is there anybody who clearly stands out as not getting along with the others, or is this a tribe that gets along pretty much with everyone on net? Oh, this is a tribe that gets along with pretty much everyone on net, to use your exact wording. We've all just, like, come together, and especially winning the first immunity challenge, like, we were so hyped after that. We all put in so much effort, we all met up with each other, and now it's, like, tearing this family apart, and it's, it's horrible. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, I'll throw it over to Eric, Mr. Bagel himself. So. I, I want to ask you a question about what happened at the last Tribal Council. So you saw that after Ogin lost the first community challenge, they voted off a freshman. You are now one of three freshmen on this tribe. Does that make you nervous going into this Tribal Council? Um, it does a little bit. Like, I'm a little bit worried that um, if the other team is ganging up on freshmen, maybe, like, our tribe is doing that too. But I doubt that's actually the case, so I'm hoping for the best. Okay, I'll throw it over to Cushy for our penultimate question. So, you are one of two people in this game who aren't playing from Pittsburgh. Has that shown any difficulty in trying to get along with people in the tribe, or do you think that people have been still very willing to talk to you and work out long-term game relationships? Um, I think it's definitely tough being remote, largely due to the fact that I can't meet anyone in person, even like socially distance-wise. Um, but I think like people have been really open to making connections and still talking. And I think that's um, a really big deal because I think maybe that's what makes us a little bit stronger than the other tribe as well. The fact that everybody wants to get to know each other rather than like just ignore people that aren't, aren't present. Gotcha. Okay, fair enough. That, that makes a lot of sense. So Corey, if Audrey seems to be a threat of sorts, who else is really standing out to you as people to watch out for on that Ogun tribe? Uh, that's a good question, honestly, because I still haven't had a ton, a ton of chances to talk to them. I've only really chatted with Olivia here and there and Leo a bit, and I feel like the people I've talked to definitely seems like consensus that Leo seems like he can be a bit schemey, so I feel like he'd have to be my answer at this point. Past that, I just haven't had the opportunity to talk to any of them. Gotcha. Okay, Amada seemed to have a very visceral reaction to that. So what do you think of the other tribe, just generally? Uh, are you in agreement there, or do you think that they're a much more happy family than this tribe? I think that we definitely are like a stronger tribe in terms of the unity. I think that they don't necessarily, I think they're a little bit more split down the middle. Um, I definitely think there's people that are closer to each other and others that are a little bit outcast. So I, I mean, I definitely think some things, like there's a big division and I think that that's going to be to our advantage as a tribe because I think we stick together pretty much through most things. So with that, it's time to vote. First up is Michael. Take it away. Sorry for doing this, but we just never got to know each other well enough.
I guess I'm just an ENTJ. I'll go tally the votes. I have the votes. Before I reveal the votes, if anybody has any idols or powers they'd like to play, now is the time to do so. Seeing none, I'll reveal the votes. First vote. Zoe. Second vote. Kevin. That's one vote Zoe, one vote Kevin. Next vote. Kevin. Next vote. Zoe, we're tied again. That's two votes Kevin, two votes Zoe, five votes remaining. Kevin. Next vote. Kevin. Next vote, and second person vote out of Scotty Survivor, Steel City. Kevin. Kevin, please bring me your torch. Tonight, five's enough. Kevin, the tribe has spoken. It's time for you to go. Tonight, you've gone through your first tribal council as a unit. Clearly, it was not all voting together, but hopefully you're better for it. Congratulations on surviving your first tribal council. There will be an idle clue waiting for you back at camp. Best of luck, stay safe. Next time on Scotty Survivor Steel City. Cushy becomes the last standing remote player and deals with the aftermath of the Balder tribe's blindside. I don't really trust anyone on this tribe. After both tribes receive idol clues, the contestants hunt for hidden immunity idols in hopes of securing immunity from tribal council. Who will survive another week? Tune in next week to find out. Well, it looks like I don't need to know what I would be like in the Hunger Games, because I would be like the first guy dead at the Cornucopia.